Hello everyone! Welcome to the third episode of our Action Research Webinar Series 2020. Lights, Camera, Action, Research. Your participation in this episode is an indication of your willingness to learn more about action research despite the COVID-19 pandemic. But the question is, why conduct action research amidst pandemic? We do conduct action research because we see a problem or issue related to our work as a teacher. This pandemic brought more concerns ranging from what modality is best applicable to our respective schools or locality, learning materials that we will be using, how do we reach out our learners and motivate them to continue schooling despite the odds, how shall we be able to ensure that our learners will acquire the most essential learning competencies and a lot more. Action research is always anchored on the practical problem and for sure, this school year 2020-2021, we will be confronted with various problems that may possibly be addressed systematically through research, specifically action research. Getting started in action research. At the end of this episode, you shall be able to identify researchable topics in your own classrooms or schools. As we continue, you will be guided in formulating your action research proposal following the suggested format stated in Deputy Order No. 16, Series 2017. This is to facilitate the preparation and evaluation of your proposal later and consequently its approval. Let's start from formulating your action research title. Most believe that this is the first step in crafting a proposal. But it is not. Your initial title remains a working title until you are finally done with your proposal. Now let me give you simplified steps and tips on how to formulate your action research title. Yeah! Readers of your paper instantly look at the title of your action research. This summarizes the ideas of your study. The initial aim of a title is to capture the reader's attention and to draw his or her attention to the research problem being investigated. A good title predicts the contents of the research paper. It should always contain basic keywords that would make it easier to locate during a keyword search. Your action research title must be something catchy and captivating to the readers, but at the same time, includes the basic components such as the issue problem, the intervention that you will employ to address the problem, and the participants or respondents of the study. Let me give you some examples of a research title and let's check if they contain the basic components that I have mentioned. First example, mental models aid in improving reading comprehension of grade 6 struggling readers. At a glance, the reader can easily understand that the action research is conceptualized to improve the reading comprehension of the grade 6 struggling readers by using mental models. Now, can we identify the focus of the study in this example? Did it summarize the ideas in your study? Can you predict now the contents of the research study? Yes, definitely. By just looking at the title, we are informed that the study will be about using mental models in improving the reading comprehension of the grade 6 struggling readers. Let me give you another one. Improving Oral Reading Fluency of Grade 8 Students Through Guided Reading Strategy In this example, what is the problem or issue? Yes, Oral Reading Fluency Who are the participants? The Grade 8 Students What is the intervention? Yes, Guided Reading Strategy Another catchy and innovative title, Struggling Readers Start, Shine Through Acts in Readers Theater to Build Reading Fluency. Again, action research title doesn't need to be formulated and finalized prior to the writing of the proposal. It is completed after you are done with your action research proposal. And now friends, 
let us now proceed to the first part of the action research proposal as suggested in debit order number 16 series 2017 context and rationale at this point you might now be asking yourself what bothers me in my work as a classroom teacher what's wrong with what i am currently doing am i letting my learners learn and perform better in my class are they given appropriate learning activities? Am I effecting change to my learners? Those are just some of the possible questions that you might be asking yourself. Those are things that concern you as an educator. That concern is something that affects you and your teaching learning activities. It is something that you are directly involved with, something under your reach and control. It must not be concern of others. It must not be their practice that should concern you. There are times that you are confused about the scenario you felt is a concern. It is therefore helpful for you to share with your co-teachers, discuss with them your observation, deliberate with them, and then understand together what leads to that phenomenon. It might that your concern is also a concern of your fellow teachers. Once you are convinced that your concern is really something that needs to be addressed, you are now in the right track to pursuing an action research. To further articulate your understanding about the problem, you may review literature. There are conducted studies published or unpublished, which you may use as basis in choosing your strategy to be employed. You may cite some which are closely related to your focus. And now the first step is for you to articulate that concern in the context and rationale of the proposal. This is the introductory part of your paper where you are going to present the problem that you want to address in your action research. Describe the nature and extent of the identified problem, existing facts or data that would clearly support the scenario in your classroom or school would give you more clarity on the need of your study. The historical background of your study is also to be presented in this part. Unsatisfactory conditions felt and perceived causes or triggering factors should also be included. In other words, it is here where you will be writing the why of your study. In the final part, you must be able to establish the connection between the rationale and the study to be conducted. Your desire to have a deeper understanding of the situation, circumstance, or phenomenon that you are confronted with must be clearly presented in this part. The timeliness and relevance of the proposed study should also be emphasized. There is no prescription as to number of words or pages for this part. What would make this part complete is if you were able to discuss the nature, extent, and salient features of your identified problem. Different aspects of the actual research settings are elaborated, showing in-depth and critical analysis of the situation. For you to have a clear idea as to how you're going to write your context and rationale, let me give you this example. So if your identified problem is about reading, you may start defining or describing reading as well as the role it plays in teaching and learning process. You may cite the programs, projects, and activities initiated by the Department of Education as a whole. You may include facts and figures whenever applicable. And then you may slowly shift to presenting the issues by stating some data to establish your problem. Then you go more specific. If division-wide data about your problem is available, it would be better. This will help connect the scenario in your school. Eventually, you may now present your own unique problem. You may include description of your observation about the phenomenon. You shift now to the specific practical issue that you want to answer. For example, your issue is about reading comprehension. You may elaborate more about the issue, cite some of your reviewed literature which are closely related to your study. Your discussion must be logically arranged until you are able to surface the issue that you want to address. It is important that you must establish connection between the why of your study to the proposed plan later. Again, context and rationale is the why of your study. Thus, 
it must contain all the answers as to why there is a need to conduct your study. And the second part of your action research proposal is your action research question. After you determine, define, and describe the problem or situation, you may now think of the aspects of your teaching that needs to be changed, modified, or improved in order to resolve the problem. You may start by writing down statements about your practice which may be about your teaching strategy, learning materials that you use, classroom management, or your learning environment. Remember to include only those that are under your control. Now that you have narrowed down factors that resulted in your perceived problem, choose a specific practice that you want to change. This will lead you to the specific question that you want to answer in your research project. Basically, you are answering the question, what can I do about my problem? Take note of the word I. Action research is focused on things that you are directly concerned with. Why? Because the main use of action research is improving your own practice. So next, formulate your action research question. Look into the relationship of your perceived problem to your teaching practices. In formulating your research question, Consider the following characteristics of a good research question. First, it is important. A good research question is important that it should give light to learners learning through proper implementation of the curriculum as well as employing effective teaching strategies. This means that it shall benefit primarily your learners being the end users of your efforts. Though emphasized in earlier part that action research aims to improve one's own practice, your own practice, but of course, the learners are the receivers of the effect of your improved practice. Second characteristic, it is actionable. Unclear and vague research question will just bring you anxiety and frustration. A good research question should be focused and specific. It must require action, lead you to do something that would offer improved teaching, learning, interaction. Third, it is meaningful. You conduct action research because you feel that something in your current practice needs to be improved or something is missing. It is therefore imperative that the research question that you formulate is meaningful to you as a teacher. It has to be connected to you personally or professionally because as you try to find answers to your research question, you'll be stretched intellectually and effectively. Fourth characteristic, it is manageable. It is important that it can be addressed within the confines of your own classroom. A focused and manageable research question is something within your control and influence, within your means, and most importantly, within your competence. You can only say that you have focused and specific action research question if you have decided on doable and practicable action how and when to do it. Elements of an action research question. Furthermore, be guided by the following basic elements of an action research question. First, intervention. The solution, action, innovation, strategy or intervention that you want to employ in order to address the practical issue that you have identified must be clearly stated. Second, participants. The subjects or participants of the research must be included for specificity. And third, outcome. State the expected behavior, performance or skill as target outcome of the undertaking. Okay? Now, let us go through the following examples of an action research question. How does reading comprehension of expository texts of struggling readers improve as a result of providing explicit small group instruction for two 20-minute periods two times per week? In this example, the intervention is explicit small group instruction while the participants are the struggling readers. It can also be noted 
that the desired outcome or the purpose of the action research is to improve the reading comprehension of expository text. Another example, you may start your action research question with this paragraph. This study aims to reduce the number of learners in frustration reading level from 22 to 0 grade 6 pupils of Masagana Elementary School, school year 2019-2020 through teaching strategies using mental models. Specifically, it will seek answers to the following questions. First, how can the use of mental models in teaching, reading, reduce the number of learners under frustration reading level? Second, how effective mental models are in reducing the number of grade 6 pupils under frustration reading level? What is the intervention? Use of mental models in teaching reading. Who are the participants? Learners under frustration level. What is the desired outcome? To reduce or reduce number of learners under frustration reading level. If your action research question is complete with these basic elements, finding answers to it is clear. The alignment of the succeeding parts of the proposal will be easy. Action research proposal preparation must start with clear action research question anchored on the identified problem articulated in the context and rational part. We'll now have the third part of the action research proposal Proposed Innovation, Intervention, and Strategy Describe the action that you will do in order to solve your identified practical problem. A literature review would help you a lot in choosing and deciding on the intervention or strategy to use. Though action research is not conducted to fill the gap in the literature, adapting strategies from literature to solve a similar problem would be helpful. You may also discuss the issue with your co-teachers who experience the same in his or her class. Sharing of thoughts, opinions, and experiences would lead you to better understanding of the problem. Most action researchers are reactive, which means that the researchers employ intervention in order to solve a felt problem. With the existing situation as the baseline, you decide on solution. Most of the time, you adopt some strategies proven effective by previous researchers, which you believe will help address your identified problem. Some action researchers are innovative, which means the researcher would like to formulate his or her own strategy as an innovation and would test their effectiveness. Nevertheless, regardless of the nature of the intervention, clearly describe what intervention strategy that will be employed who will be involved as well as the activities that will be undertaken. Include also the rationale, extent, and limitation of the intervention, innovation, or strategy. This part generally focus on the what of the action research. Example, as an intervention to the emerging problem on the alarming numbers of learners in frustration level, this study will utilize mental models like pictures and videos as aid on reading comprehension. The participants of the study will be subjected to a daily class session utilizing reading materials with picture counterpart or video counterpart for one hour during school days to be facilitated by the teacher researcher for three months. There will be a weekly reading assessment to be conducted using fill tools in order to measure the progress of the learners. The weekly progress of the readers in frustration level will be recorded using the tracking of weekly progress template. That ends the third episode of our webinar series 2020. Thank you for watching and I am inviting all of you to like and follow the Facebook page and subscribe to the YouTube channel of Planning and Research section.